All right, Don, my first question to you is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer? I want to say I was about six years old. Um, I grew up in a family that revered books. You know, my dad was an inveterate reader, a sailor. My mom was a librarian. And so we always had books around the house and always had stories around the house. But I, I think I remember I was about six and um, I was looking through these books, which were a little too old for me. Uh, they were the landmark biographies and, and they were called You Were There. And they were always about kids who were there at something. You know, you were there at Gettysburg. You were there at the Johnstown flood, you know, and it was always a boy and a girl and they were there. Uh, and I loved those books. I loved those stories. And I thought, boy, if I could do that, that'd be great. Your book, uh, City of Fire, is available mm -hmm. nationwide as of today. Mm -hmm. Would the inspiration come for the book? It's a double, uh, two-hinged inspiration, Adam. Um, one is, again, my youth. I grew up in Rhode Island, where the book is set. In fact, it's the first book that I've set in Rhode Island. Uh, and I had memories of the mob days there. You know, I wasn't involved in it, you know, but it was always on, on the periphery. And then uh, in my 30s, I started reading the classics. And one of them, of course, was the Iliad. And uh, the precipitating incident of the Iliad involving Helen of Troy reminded me of a very similar incident, believe it or not, that had occurred in New England that touched off one of the crime wars. And I thought, wow, could I take some of the great stories and characters from the classics and meld them into a contemporary crime story that you could read just as a contemporary crime story with no reference to the classics at all, but borrowing those themes and bringing those themes, you know, a couple of thousand years forward. What is, take me behind the process of how you formulate an idea for a book. It varies, you know, it really does from book to book. You know, I did this big trilogy on the drug wars and that formulation came from unfortunately, sadly, real life incidents. And I basically tracked the history of the drug wars for about 50 years. So in that case, it was a matter of chronology. It was a matter of saying, okay, what happened over the last 10 years? What were the significant events? And how do I put my characters there to you know, elucidate those events for the reader? Um, other times, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You know, I, I had a sentence running around in my head for probably 15 years. And the sentence was, nobody knows how the chimp got the revolver. I don't know, I, you know, it was just in my head. Uh, and one day I thought, well, I have a little leisure right now. I'll, I'll sit down and how, how did the chimp get the revolver? And then, you know, you're just making it up as you go along. So the, the process really varies. You know, Frank Lloyd Wright famously said, you know, uh, form follows function. And, and I would say that style follows story. Uh, as we know, City of Fire is part of a trilogy of books set out to come over uh, to come out over the next couple of years. But you recently also made the decision to retire from writing. What yeah. made you want to make that decision? Um, I think it's time to do something else. I think we are at a uh, existential moment in American democracy. I've been involved in this now for you know about four or five years now. Uh, you know, being pretty active on Twitter, you know, uh, my partner Shane and me putting out videos. Uh, I don't think the danger has passed. I think we're still deep in the woods. And so I want to devote more time to that. Uh, I also want to have the time and energy because as you can see in the photos, I'm not young, not you, uh, to kind of lifting uh, younger writers, you know, um, being there to answer questions and help solve problems or just being a sounding board, you know, with a little experience. So, yeah. <laughs> just a little, right? <laughs> just a little, just a tad, just a couple of laps around the pool, you know, Adam? I am a huge movie guy. So I want to throw it back right. just a little ways to Savages. I love okay. that film. I love Thank that you. script. What was <laughs> it like working with Oliver Stone to convert your book into a screenplay? Yeah, you know, Shane and I wrote the screenplay with Oliver. And so Shane and I mostly worked together and, you know, occasionally with Oliver on it, of course, had his, had his own takes. 
it's always interesting doing a screenplay of your own work because it forces you to this reality that books and movies are two different breeds of cat, right? With very different needs. And so as a novelist, you, you have to yield to some of those needs of a medium that's vertical and kinetic and large. Uh, and, and you also come to realize how many other people have an impact on your work. You know, it's not just the director, you know, the, the DP, of course, the art designer, the people who do hair and costumes and, and everything else. Everybody is, is jumping in on your stuff. Now, the coolest thing about having a movie made is exactly that. And it didn't hit me until the, I first watched the credits rolling on Savages. I went, my God, one morning I was sitting in this room, in fact, this room. And I had this little idea, you know, this little kernel of an idea. And now a couple of years later, a couple of hundred people are paying mortgages and rents and tuitions and all of that because of that little idea. You asked me specifically about Oliver, you know, look, working with Oliver Stone is everything you'd think it is and a little more. And I, I'm going to leave it at that. What's it kind of like now you go through the process, you write the film, you adapt it from the book. What's it like kind of seeing it on the big screen? Well, it's very different. It's very different. It's a little scary, you know, because big screen is the key there. You know, back when we were going to movies and all that, you know, pre pre COVID days, uh, because it's so large and it's so loud. Uh, and <laughs> Uh, it's amazing to watch really good actors, and they were, say your words. And again, you, you, you go back, sometimes you have very specific memories of writing those words. Not always, but sometimes. And you can picture yourself sitting you know, at your desk typing that line in the novel, not even in the screenplay. And then, you know, John Travolta saying it or Salma Hayek saying it or, you know, whoever it happened to be is, is pretty amazing. And sometimes you forget, Shane and I were at a bar one time and then after the film came on TV. And uh, one of the characters said a line to the other one. And I said, hey, Shane, that was a really good line, man. And he looked at me and started laughing. And he said, you wrote it. <laughs> I'd forgotten. I thought he had, you know, but I think that's what a, a good collaboration is. You know? 